Okay. Um, here's the, uh, the, the result we just established has this corollary, um, which uh, gives the existence of uh, what's called monodromy maps. So the idea is that if you have a covering space and you have a path in the base, that path determines a bijection from the pre-image of that path over the starting point to the pre-image of that path over the ending point. So the unique path looping property at least establishes that map. It'll take a little more work for, to see that that map is in fact a bijection. So here's, here it is more precisely. So I say it's a corollary of the previous result, the unique path looping property, property. So let E to B be a covering space. Then each continuous map to the base determines a map between sets. It's denoted gamma lower subscript exclamation point, just for fun. <laughs> that map is from the pre-image inside of capital E of the value of the path at time zero to the pre-image at time one. So each path in other words, determines a map from one fiber to the other. This is particularly interesting if the path is actually a loop. It starts and ends in the same place. For them, this determines this gamma lower shriek is a self-map of the pre-image at that starting and ending point. So for the proof, well, uh, from the unique path looping property, so each element in this set, in the domain of the map we're trying to construct, call that element E sub zero, zero because of time zero. Each of those elements determines a commutative diagram like this. That's intended to be, so it determines a commutative diagram like that. Where this map goes to time zero, this map selects out little e zero. This is the given map gamma. And by the unique path looping property, it has a unique filler. Call it gamma. Uh, it depends on e naught, so call it gamma sub e naught. I'm intended to put a tilde. Okay, so define gamma lower shriek to simply be so that it, it evaluates on each element in the domain, each e naught, as the time one value of this unique list. Because this lower triangle commutes, you know the time one value of this path will project down by pi to the time one value of gamma. In other words, the time one value will belong to pi inverse gamma one. That's what we wanted to do. We just defined the map, a way of assigning to every element in here and element over there. And here it is, I drew it in pictures. Uh, I don't know if you can see the yellow so if B is this circle, it's just the yellow, and E is this threefold, uh, the, this other circle mapping, winding around three times to that circle, and if gamma is, I chose a more interesting path, it's one that winds around one and a half times the circle, so it starts there at zero, the white stuff goes around one and a half times and ends there. So each point 
in the so the preimage of, of the time zero value of the path gamma has three elements in it. If you choose one of those elements, say that one, that determines the solid diagram, and the unique path lifting property guarantees the existence of a continuous map like this, which is a path upstairs in the total space. And you just trace what happens down here and just see where you end up. So uh, you go around the base one time, that puts you there, and then another half time finds you back up a half of a staircase. So that right there, that point in capital E is the value of gamma shriek on that point. So the, now we can ask the question, is gamma lower shriek a bijection? The answer is yes. But to prove that, um, well, here, here's an idea for how to prove that. Let's see, what would the inverse to this be? If this was a bijection, it would have an inverse map. Oh, well, just run your path backwards, right? That's a good idea. Uh, but how do you know that uh, the gamma shriek followed by the gamma shriek where uh, applied to where gamma is the path running backwards, the original gamma, how do you know that composite is the identity here? So if you run a path one way and then just retrace yourself back to the associated monodromy map, how do you know that that's the identity? Well, the idea is, oh, if you run your path out and back, you can just suck the path in continuously and so uh, whatever that composite map is, there's a continuous family from that composite map on this set to the composite map for the constant path, and that's got to be the identity. Um, so that, that's a nice idea. It requires a little bit more sophisticated version of the unique path lifting property called the unique homotopy lifting property. So this is a strict generalization of that other. Here's what it says. Let P be a compact Hausdorff topological space. P stands for parameter. Let E to B be a covering space. Then each commutative diagram, each solid diagram, has a unique filla. I hope that looks very familiar. For instance, if capital P is just a point, then this is, which is certainly a compact Hausdorff space, then this is just the unique path lifting property right back again. Uh, and it, when P, when capital P is the interval itself, let's think about what that means. Capital P is the interval, this is the interval across a point, in other words, just the interval, and the top is a path in E. Bottom is a square mapping to B, which I can think of as a path of paths in B. So this says if you're given a path of paths in B and a list of the starting point path to E, can you lift that path of paths to E? The answer is yes, and it's unique. So that's the unique homotopy lifting property. Um, I'm going to elect to postpone, to, to not prove it right now, and let's see how to establish that this is a bijection premised on this. 